want to get out of here, Sam? Yeah, you're tired of being here, aren't you? You want to go someplace different. Sammy wants to go sailing. <coughs> Good morning, Mr. Nash. Good morning, Mrs. Nash. We are all checked into Panama, and now it's time to get to work. We've got a long list of items to check off here. We've got a, about two weeks, we think, and number one on the list is to resolve our engine overheating issue. So let's get this party started. <laughs> So we're taking a break from putting together YouTube episodes and we're teaming up here to pull out the, and fix a couple of things on pumps, flapper valves on the secondary bilge pump are shot. You can see how this guy is not sealing anymore. Whereas this guy's really nice flat sealed. Same with this one. This one's pushed open and he's sitting in kind of an open position and this guy's nice and flat. This is really a nice replacement part. It's not like just the little seal. Like I assumed we'd have to take that metal plate off that you've got there and replace those little seals, but it's just the whole end cap. So yeah, you just pop a new one in. Super easy. It's got the quick release, so you just slide it in. We have to test it. I just want you to notice the concern on Dean's face here. See the concern? Yes. Okay, here we go. He's always concerned. There we go. I think it's not running. That's a really good... Uh... Did you pull an electrical wire maybe? Testing our Johnson uh, bilge pump, our secondary bilge pump, take two. First time we didn't have power, uh, we scrambled around trying to find out what was going on. And thanks to Sailing Australis, who are now in uh, French Polynesia and another Oceanish 50, uh, they pointed us to a relay. We went in, uh, pressed the relay, gave it a little bit tightening, and that did the trick, we think. So Carla. Do you want to flip the button on and let's see if we uh, if we have success? And there it goes. There it goes. Bingo. So this morning we are tackling gargoyles overheating issue. Uh, right now there's two mechanics in the back, and they are going to disconnect the transmission from our pop shaft, um, and then see if they can do a load test on the transmission to see if it might be causing our uh, overheating issue. an hour and we are still at perfect temperature. It's the gas analyzer. Okay. The liquid is blue. Okay. If it turns green or any other color, then we got problems. <coughs> and in, in the motor itself. In the motor? Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a distinct different in coloration. Okay. Yeah. Now we'll do a pressure test. The diagnostics continue on Gargoyle's engine. Dr. Oli is listening to the engine block to try to determine the issue. He spots a problem and gets a second opinion. Something tells us this is not a good sign. Meanwhile, in the main cabin, we have been working to remove the hot water tank so they can swap in the new tank quickly. With all the hoses off, it's hauled outside so they can move the fittings to the new tank and 40 minutes later, the new tank is installed. As always, there's one fitting who decides it needs to add some drama. Today we're going to be focusing on a Genoa, which we are going to try to pull down. And um, engine, today they are going to take the head off of our engine, which should be exciting yet horrific. Remember this, while sailing in the Galapagos, we ripped the Genoa luff and we were warned it might be an issue feeding it through the furler due to the tear. So we have waited until we were on the dock to pull the sail down just in case we need to go up the forestay to clear it through the furler track. 
We are in luck. Now the sail is dropped, we'll roll it up and send it off for repair. So we were using our pole quite a bit coming to Panama and it looks like our pole is doing a little uh, rubbing on our sheets. So something we're gonna watch when we use it in the future to see what we're doing wrong that's causing some chafing on our sheets. Good news is we can just reverse this guy and use the other end and then uh, we'll monitor moving forward. So the big job is going on in our aft cabin. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. These guys are working hard. So, in the middle of taking everything apart. It took two hours to remove the head, so let's speed this process up. All right, so everything's up. Can you see if it was leaking or? Um, oh yes, yeah, it shows sounds. Ah, uh, okay. End of the day, end of the day. And this is the rest of it, huh? Mm -hmm. See. You got it, Carla. Oh, so that's the hole in the gasket right there. Um, yeah, all the gasket is not really, but you can see it. It's the gasket there. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Today we're catching a ride into Panama City with Oli. Um, and rumor has it the taxi drivers are really angry about some sort of restrictions, and they're blocking the roads. So this should be a true Panama. This should adventure. be fun. longer than three kilometers. Yeah, 9 a.m. Nope. We had to abort. Abort, abort, abort. Stand down. Stand down. It's going to be like a four hour drive to get to Panama City. So we're going to try it tomorrow morning at six o'clock. 6 a.m. Kevin's a, dis a little discombobulated. I am off to Panama City again, take two. Our ride awaits. Our ride awaits. It's a ride. Yes. Bar clear sailing. Or clear driving. I don't know which one. The second time is a charm, and two hours later, we are passing over the Americas Bridge into Panama City. Our first stop will be the mechanical shop to drop off the head for a compression test. They will then replace the seals and send it back to us all shiny and new. Uh, the engine, the turbo engine. Ah, uh, it's the Four. turbo diesel, the 100, 110 horse. The estimate is two weeks, so fingers crossed the parts don't get delayed. Our next stop is Nostalgia, a furniture design store to buy new fabric for Gargoyle's interior. Our sete has seen 10 years of wear and tear, so it's time to change it out for something new. No, I hate this. These are great for just sitting around the boat, but not for actually doing it. Just open, they're open. I bet, yep. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah. We are introduced to the staff as well as the Sumbrella selection. Now the daunting task of picking out one for Gargoyle. This one, maybe this one. Let's go see it in the light. Finally, we make a choice and as you can see, we're definitely exhausted. However, we have one more stop to buy the thread, zippers and Velcro needed for the upholstery. About an hour in the sewing store, but we have our Velcro, our thread, and our zippers. Do you have your sample? Kevin has a sample no, somewhere. Said, do you have the sample? No, I don't have the sample. Have the sample. Kevin's got the sample. This Kevin didn't take any video. <laughs> He's having fun. Next stop, electronic stuff. So three way. Three way. Uh, one terminator. One terminator. One blanking. One blank. Backbone. Uh, short bone. Short bone. Yay. And a long backbone. And a long backbone. Five. And the teeth. Yeah. And See? the three. That's it. Perfect. Yeah. We have all of our Raymarine stuff.
Yes, they are out for their morning dock walk here. Just like a dog, he has to stop and sniff everything. Today is Rain Marine Day, and we're gonna try to troubleshoot our depth and speed transducer. But first we have to make sure that our system is working properly. So what we did is we just basically unplugged the backbone cable from our transducer and we put a terminator there so we were terminated. Uh, but we've been told also that we have to fix our ITC5 as well. ITC5, you can see that we're missing uh, a terminator here, which we put down where we took out the backbone from our transducer. The other thing is we have not a backbone cable, but a spur cable, and we've been told that on this guy, we should definitely be using backbone cables to help with the communications. So why is that? What is the number one rule of CTALK networks? There can be only two terminations and technically with having two terminating plugs here we have four in our system which would be causing an issue okay so job done we've got the two backbone in the spurs removed everything is terminated properly so we've now moved to the forward cabin uh, removed all the flooring here and carla is putting together the three-way so let me show you there's the transducer that we are hoping is okay because we'd like to save it because it's a $300 part $500 part uh, $500 Canadian part um, it's a little hard to see this little guy even though I hold it up close but the end of it broke off and that's the terminator so it, it should look like that where, with the plug pulled out but instead it's broken off inside and this little guy was just all Befunkled, I guess would be the technical term, Carla. Befunkled. Befunkled. Oh, uh, women who fix shit. This is definitely a tip that, uh, guys, we just don't have these. Carla has a makeup brush, one of her extra little makeup brushes. And I got to tell you, it is just a brilliant addition to the toolkit <laughs> because it lets you get in these little tight spots and put a little dielectric here or there. Okay. Voila. Voila. We now have fixed the three-way. Uh, now we've eliminated everything except the cable and the transducer. Carla, you can go ahead and switch them on. Right now, you have depth and speed. The 10 years of Gargoyle's life, the leather seating inside is deteriorating rapidly. As you can see, we've now had big holes and several of the bottom cushions are starting to wear out. Uh, the combination of the sun, um, the sweat, and the cats running across the bottom cushions. They don't claw at the cushions at all, but they do uh, They do tend to run and scratch it up a bit and then it wears. So get measured for new cushions. Getting measured for new curtain cushions, yes. Exciting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Through a candid camera. That's right. okay. New cushions, finally. <laughs> hmm. New cushions. Old person. Yeah. yeah. Looks way better. Much brighter. You have new school person. Yeah. <laughs> Looks really good. Nice job. More pop. Yeah, more pop pops out. <laughs> yeah. More tropical. It's an amazing job. Thank you so much. More tropical for sure. Big day on gargoyle. We get the final cushions. Our final cushions. Master seamstress. <laughs> She's here. All right, hand me the big one, maybe. <laughs> Hi. 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 That's my. You need to put the camera down and do something, honey. <laughs> um, Look no, at that. No end. The bit. Ta -da. Wow, look at all that. We have a ton of Velcro left, huh? Yeah, that's cool, yeah. Well done, Eva. Yeah, it looks Thank amazing. You. Thank you. It's really good. It has been an interesting couple of weeks here in Panama. Uh, we've done a lot of work on the boat, but unfortunately, the overheating issue has not been resolved. We're still waiting on parts. So we're waiting kind of day by day to find out where our engine is at. And it looks like we've got at least a couple more weeks here 
at the marina to just make sure that we've got everything checked off our list. But... But next week, we will have a new addition to Gargoyle. Something new to show off. Ciao for now. This one's really tight. <laughs> That's what he said. Dripping. This is gross. Nice and steamy today. It's hot in here. And uh, <laughs> a Terminator. A Terminator. A Terminator. An Arnold. We're missing Arnold. Now we just have I to did want temperature. Yeah, not for five hundred dollars. Budget, budget, budget! We, I could get the meat thermometer out and put it in the water, exactly. right? Uh, no, 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 no! What are you doing? Oh, I'm ready. Are you? What? <laughs> I take it the answer is no. Ow! Oh, I hit myself in the head.